Hello and welcome to my channel. In this lecture, we'll be uh, uh, discussing the um, uh, leg, the fascia and anterior compartment muscles. So let's begin. The shaft and distal end of tibia. We have studied the proximal ends of uh, tibia and fibula. Now it's uh, time to uh, look at the distal ends. The cross section of the tibia is triangular, as you can see here. Okay, it has an anterior border, uh, medial border, or sometimes called posterior border, and an interosseous uh, border. So it has a medial, uh, lateral, and posterior surfaces, as you can see here. And also observe that the medial surface is subcutaneous the medial surface between the anterior and posterior borders or anterior and medial borders is subcutaneous uh, the interosseous border faces the interosseous border of the fibula and attaches the interosseous membrane and uh, remember the soleal line um, um, on the back of the proximal end of tibia it was on the posterior surface, uh, descends from lateral to medial and blends with the medial border of the uh, uh, tibia. Um, uh, distal end, as you can see here, is rectangular and there is a mass projecting from it or protrusion from it. This is the medial malleolus. Uh, uh, on the other hand, the lateral malleolus formed by the fibula by the way, they should be put in a way that the fibula is slightly lower than the tibia because the lateral malleolus is um, um, lower in level than the medial uh, malleolus. The medial malleolus is grooved from the posterior surface by the tendon of tibialis posterior. The distal end of fibula, the fibula uh, uh, it's a bone in the leg and it does not carry weight it's not weight bearing because it attaches it articulates with the undersurface of the lateral condyle of, of tibia it doesn't carry weight it doesn't share in the um, uh, knee joint the articulation itself and it's completely enclosed by muscles has uh, uh, an anterior border and uh, posterior border and interosseous border this is the interosseous border the anterior and interosseous borders are close together uh, and the medial crest the, the one you see you see here is the medial crest It's on the posterior surface of the of the uh, fibula the distal end expands, uh, as I showed you before, as the lateral malleolus, and it's grooved by the tendons of the peroneus uh, longus and brevis muscles on the back. So remember, the tibialis posterior on the medial malleolus back surface, and the peronei longus and brevis muscles on the back of the lateral uh, posterior surface of the lateral malleolus. Okay? If you look at the fibula from this direction, you see a facet for articulation with the talus and uh, posterior inferior to it, uh, to the facet, you will find the malleolar fossa. This malleolar fossa is for the attachments of the posterior talofibular ligament. So remember, the posterior talofibular ligament attached to the malleolar fossa of the fibula see how many stations you can get in a practical exam like the groove on the back of medial malleolus back of lateral malleolus and uh, the fossa the malleolar fossa posterior inferior to the facet for articulation of talus um, <clears throat> The tibiofibular joints, uh, like the radius and ulna, in three, in three sites, the superior tibiofibular joint, the inferior tibiofibular joint, and the interosseous membrane is a joint. Okay, so the superior or the proximal tibiofibular joint is a synovial joint, synovial joint, plain synovial joint, has anterior and posterior uh, tibiofibular ligaments and the nerve supply is by the nearby common peroneal nerve 
and the blood supply is by the anterior and posterior tibial recurrent arteries, branches of the um, uh, tibial arteries, anterior and posterior tibial recurrent uh, arteries. The interosseous membrane, uh, as I told you, it's a joint itself. It's a fibrous joint, fibrous syndesmosis type, uh, you know, but uh, uh, the membrane is big for uh, other fibrous joints you are used to, like the sutures of the skull, for example, uh, like the inferior tibiofibular joint, for example. Okay, so it's a fibrous syndesmosis type. Fibers are in, in different directions, but the majority of fibers mainly down and lateral. Why? To prevent the upward, you know, pull of the fibula. And why the fibula, uh, sorry, to prevent the downward uh, uh, pull of the fibula. Why? Because when muscles contract, they pull on the fibula downwards. So the interosseous membrane pre prevents the uh, uh, fibula from going uh, downwards. As you can see here, it's perforated by a branch of the uh, uh, of uh, uh, perforated proximally for the anterior tibial vessels, the anterior tibial vessels, vessels coming from posterior to anterior, because the popliteal artery was posterior. So the anterior tibial artery in the proximal aperture and the distally it's perforated by the peroneal artery uh, the one we will study with the arteries of the back of the leg and it unites lower down with the interosseous ligament of the distal tibiofibular joint the distal tibiofibular joint is the two bones joined by an interosseous ligament uh, also, it has an anterior and posterior ligaments, and um, um, the um, inferior part of the posterior tibiofibular ligament, you can see it from the back, is uh, drawn yellowish in atlases because it's an elastic ligament. Remember, the inferior part of the posterior tibiofibular ligament is the inferior transverse tibiofibular ligament which is elastic to allow from for some you know um, um, gives away you know giving away because of the uh, weight of the body is um, half the weight of the body is on this joint um, uh, the um, and as i told you the interosseous ligament is continuous with the interosseous uh, membrane the fascia of the leg, uh, the superficial fascia, it's thin over the tibia and uh, it has an adipose layer on the rest of the leg, continuous with that of the thigh. Also, the fascia lata, lata we, we, uh, we studied that it attaches around the, uh, you know, to all the bony prominences around the knee, and so does the deep fascia of the leg. It encircles the, encircles the uh, uh, leg, and we will see a cut section of the leg uh, soon uh, to study it. And uh, it uh, also blends with the medial and periosteum of the medial and lateral malleoli, uh, malleoli lower down. Also, it blends with the periosteum of the medial surface, the medial subcutaneous surface of the tibia and forms the flexor and the extensor retinacula. The ones you see here are the superior extensor retinaculum and the inferior extensor Y-shaped retinaculum. The flexor retinaculum is on the back, behind the medial malleolus holding the flexor tendons. See, this is the superior extensor retinaculum and inferior extensor retinaculum to hold the tendons of the muscles in place. Now, for to study the course of the fascia, it encircles the leg, of course, encircles uh, each muscle, but it gives septa. Uh, you can see here an anterior intermuscular septum and a posterior intermuscular septum to the anterior and posterior borders of the uh, fibula. And in between is the lateral compartment of the leg, which is the peroneae longus and brevis muscles. So remember, between the anterior and posterior intermuscular septa is the 
lateral compartment uh, of the leg. Now, this becomes the anterior compartment of the leg that has the extensors in it. And all this is the posterior compartment of the leg. But observe that uh, there is another septum between the posterior borders of the tibia and fibula. Um, um, uh, it divides the uh, posterior compartment into superficial and deep muscles, superficial containing the gastrocnemius, the plantaris, and the soleus muscles, and deep containing the rest of the muscles, the flexor hallucis longus and the flexor digitorum longus and tibialis posterior, which is the deepest. But there is also another transverse septum that attaches to the uh, uh, medial crest of the fibula and to the back of tibia, separating the tibialis posterior from flexor hallucis longus and soleus. Um, uh, this is called the deep transverse, um, 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 well, uh, uh, so as not to confuse it with the deep transverse fascia, it's a transverse aponeurosis to the medial crest of the fibula and uh, the back of tibia, different than the deep transverse uh, uh, septum which separates the superficial from the deep uh, muscles so this is the arrangement of the deep fascia of the leg now um, uh, in uh, surgery after operating on the leg they usually uh, you know uh, do a fasciotomy fasciotomy incisions in the fascia because the compartments are very tight and when operating on the leg, uh, uh, there, is, uh, there will be an inflammatory exudate uh, after the surgery, of course. So the tension inside the compartments will increase, may come to the uh, uh, you know, extent that it compresses the muscles. So uh, they, they go through ischemic necrosis. And you, to prevent that, you do a fasciotomy of the deep fascia of the leg to release the pressure of from the uh, exudate after the surgery now the retinaculum um, uh, the extensor retinaculum and the flexor retinaculum and the perineal retinaculum now we will be dealing with the extensor and perineal retinaculum because we are not studying the flexor compartment the superior extensor retinaculum, the one you see here, between the anterior margins of the tibia and fibula, uh, proximal to the ankle, as you can see here. Uh, muscles, vessels, and nerves pass under it. And the only muscle with synovial sheath under this uh, retinaculum is tibialis anterior. So the synovial sheath of tibialis anterior begins proximally, uh, proximal to the other tendons. The inferior extensor retinaculum is a Y shaped, as you can see here, from lateral to medial. The stem of the Y is attached to the calcaneus, fans medially to superior and inferior bands, the superior band to the medial malleolus, okay, um, or the proximal band to the medial malleolus encloses the extensor hallucis longus and the tibialis anterior muscles. And the distal band continues with the plantar aponeurosis, which is the deep fascia of the sole of foot. Okay? Holds the other tendons, as you can see here. So this is the inferior extensor retinaculum, which is Y-shaped. Now, the stem of the inferior extensor retinaculum gives rise to the uh, uh, perineal retinacula that holds the perineal uh, especially the perineus um, uh, uh, longus in place. Um, the synovial sheath of the tibialis anterior uh, from the superior border of the superior extensor retinaculum to uh, area between bands of inferior retinaculum, so from here to here. And, uh, of course, this is, uh, uh, well, um, uh, an atlas drawing it's not uh, that much accurate the extensor digitolum longus and perineus tertius are in one sheath 
um, uh, as you can see here. This is the perineus tertius. This is the extensor digitorum longus. Extensor hallucis longus in separate sheath, which is this muscle, extensor hallucis longus muscle. The perineal retinacula, there is a superior retinaculum and inferior retinaculum. And there is a trochlea, supposed to be a trochlea here, that separates the two tendons from each other. Proximal to the trochlea, trochlea is the superior retinaculum and it encloses both perineae, longus and brevis muscles. But the inferior retinaculum slips from the inferior extensor retinaculum and Con uh, uh, contains only, you know, it extends, yes, on uh, brevis, but also contains only the, uh, um, um, hold, holds it in place, the peroneus longus tendon, because there is an extreme, tremendous pressure on the peroneus longus tendon, as we will study later. Um, one sheath for both perineal tendons, then each tendon in, in its own sheath. Okay? Below, below the trochlea that separates them. Now, for the muscles, anterior compartment muscles. We are looking at the anterior compartment muscles. Uh, first muscle is tibialis posterior. See that? This is the tibialis posterior muscle. Uh, from the lateral condyle of tibia and proximal two-thirds of anterior surface of tibia and intermuscular septum, um, uh, it uh, passes under the superior extensor retinaculum and through inferior extensor retinaculum. Now, the tendons will pass through the inferior extensor retinaculum as if it splits it, okay? Uh, inserts in the medial cuneiform and the base of the first metatarsal bone and uh, overlaps the anterior tibial vessels and deep peroneal nerve. Now, between it and extensor digitorum longus, where the vessels first, then between the tibialis anterior and exten sorry, extensor digitorum longus, then the vessels and nerve become between the tibialis anterior and the extensor hallucis longus. The action of the muscle, as you can see, it's on the medial side, so inversion at the joints of the foot, not the ankle. There is no eversion and inversion in the, at the ankle. At the ankle is only dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. And since it passes in front of the ankle, so it dorsiflexes the ankle. And the near nerve supply is by the deep peroneal nerve. Uh, to cut it short, the extensor muscles are supplied by the deep peroneal nerve, except uh, for the lateral compartment peronei supplied by the superficial uh, perineal nerve. Okay. The extensor hallucis longus from fibula and interosseous membrane between the tibialis anterior and extensor digitorum longus. And as I told you before, the vessels between the vessels and nerve between it and the tibialis anterior. Uh, observe here, it crosses medial to the vessels. It was lateral to the vessels, then it crosses medially uh, to the vessels. Now the artery, the dorsalis pedis artery, becomes lateral to it, between it and the extensor hallucis brevis muscle. Okay. Um, uh, um, also deep to superior retinaculum uh, through the inferior retinaculum, inserts in the base of the distal phalanx, distal phalanx of the big toe or the hallux and the action it extends the big toe and dorsiflexion at the ankle the nerve supply is deep peroneal nerve now the extensor digitorum longus this muscle from the lateral condyle of tibia also and upper fibula so from both bones and the interosseous membrane the vessels and nerves first between it and tibialis anterior, uh, and distally they become between the hallucis longus and the tibialis anterior. Now, descends deep to the superior retinaculum through the inferior retinaculum, splits into four tendons for the lateral four toes. For the lateral four toes, toes okay? Uh, uh, from um, 
toes two to four, as you can see here, the tendons joined by another tendon. See that? This is of the extensor hallucis, extensor digitorum brevis muscle on the dorsum of the uh, uh, foot at the level of the metatarsophalangeal joints. Inserts by forming an extensor expansion. The expansion um, uh, it's formed of a middle band to the uh, middle phalanx, two side bands to the distal phalanx of the uh, toe. Okay, of course, there is no middle phalanx in the big toe. And the extensor expansion, like the hand, joined by the interossei and lumbricals uh, muscles. The action extends the toe and dorsiflexion at the uh, ankle joint. The um, uh, peroneus tertius muscle, observe, the peroneus tertius, not longus or brevis, tertius, it is part of the extensor digitorum longus, as you can see here, and this is its tendon. Okay, see this thin tendon that goes to the dorsum uh, of the base of the fifth metatarsal uh, bone. The action is uh, dorsiflexion and eversion because it's attached to the lateral margin of the foot. And as I told you before, all muscles supplied by the deep perineal nerve. Okay, now the lateral muscles. The peroneus or fibularis longus muscle from the head of the fibula, uh, upper lateral surface, uh, it has a gap for the passage of the common peroneal nerve deep to it uh, at the level of the neck of fibula. Um, um, it's superficial to the peroneus brevis muscle. See, this is the brevis muscle and this is the longus muscle. This is the brevis muscle underneath. Uh, um, and together they groove the lateral malleolus. Now, the tendons of peroneae pass behind the lateral malleolus. This means that the pull or action will cause plantar flexion of the foot, not dorsiflexion like the rest of the extensors. Plantar flexion of the foot because it passes behind the axis of the uh, ankle uh, joint. Uh, then the tendon changes direction for the first time, C descends. Then uh, with the cuboid bone, it grooves the undersurface of the cuboid bone, and the groove is bridged by extension from the long plantar ligament and inserts on the medial side in the base of the first metatarsal and the medial cuneiform. So this is the second change in direction. This is the first change in direction. This is the second change in uh, direction. The action is eversion, since it's on the lateral side, and plantar flexion. Now, because it changes direction and because the friction at when it changes direction to the undersurface of the cuboid, there is a sesamoid bone here or fibrocartilage here to protect the tendon uh, during its action. Peroneus brevis muscle from the lower fibula, the longest from the upper fibula, this one from the lower fibula, uh, in the, both together in the superior peroneal retinaculum. Okay, see the superior peroneal retinaculum then separated by a trochlea and pass uh, over it, the trochlea, in a, in a separate synovial sheath and inserts in the lateral tubercle of the fifth metatarsal bone. As you can see here, this is the tendon of peroneus brevis muscle. The action is eversion, uh, also assists in plantar flexion. Um, uh, not like the peroneus longus of, longus, of course, which goes to the underside of the foot. The nerve supply of both muscles is the superficial peroneal nerve. Okay. Now the dorsum of foot, as you can see here, uh, fascia is thin. Uh, all of us observe that the fascia skin is loose on the dorsum of foot, not like the sole of foot. Uh, the fascia is thin. 
uh, and blends with the plantar aponeurosis. Uh, uh, there is a dorsal venous arch on the dorsal of foot that gives rise gives uh, uh, give rise to the medial and lateral marginal veins. The medial marginal vein will form the great saphenous vein. The lateral marginal vein will form the short or small saphenous vein. And there is a muscle, actually two muscles. The extensor digitorum brevis from the dorsolateral surface of calcaneus and stem of the inferior extensor retinaculum. Now this one splits to the medial four toes, not the lateral four toes, to the medial four toes. Now from two to four, they join the tendon of extensor digitorum longus and the medial part of the muscle is an individual muscle. It's called the extensor hallucis brevis extensor hallucis brevis inserts at the base of the proximal phalanx the action of the muscle assists in extension of the digits of course it doesn't act uh, doesn't act on the ankle because it's below the ankle okay past the ankle not before the ankle no so uh, the action is only on the digits extension of the digits and the nerve supply by the deep peroneal uh, uh, nerve okay um, well um, this uh, covers the uh, fascia and the anterior compartment anterior and lateral compartment muscles of the leg I hope you um, uh, got the maximum benefit of this lecture and thank you very much for watching.